Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly Rodden. I'm Assistant Dean for Research and Education here in the libraries. I'd like to welcome you to our second presentation in the library's Impact Through Action presentation series, uh, which focuses on the way uh, the libraries and librarians um, <coughs> impact the communities we serve. Uh, so today's presentation, Wake Up and Get to Work, How I Engage with Large Classes in Active Learning and Top Hat, I'm sorry, I got that wrong, Chad, um, is presented by Chad Boninger. Uh, Chad is the head of the library's user services department and our business librarian. Uh, Chad is a leader not only among our staff here in the library at engaging students with technology, but also across the profession. So we're really happy that he volunteered to do this today. Um, in today's presentation, he will explore how he has successfully used Top Hat to move away from point and click demonstrations of library tools toward engaging students with information even in the large classroom setting. So welcome, Chad. Thank you. So Kelly said I volunteered for this. Um, <laughs> I can't really say that's exactly how I would phrase it. Uh, basically, I, I wrote up a blog post on uh, how I've been using Top Hat in the classroom, in my, in my classrooms, and then the dean said, hey, you ought to uh, submit that for this thing, right? And so when your dean says you ought to do this, typically you ought to do it. So that's why I'm here right now, so, okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's start off, since this is Top Hat, let's actually start off with some Top Hat, okay? So if you have your own device, um, if you have a laptop, or a tablet, go to this URL, tophat.com slash e slash 269048, okay? If you have a cell phone, I will, uh, I will show you a place you can text it, or you can go to the mobile site here as well. Either one will work, okay? So I'm doing this first in case it fails, right? Uh, so I would rather do this now and like have be a miserable failure with the technology rather than kind of say, this is so cool, lead up to this thing, and then have it fail then, right? So, so, uh, so my, my hope is that uh, we, can, we can get kind of how Top Hat works and that sort of thing out of the way, okay? All right, so I am going to go in. Everybody good here, we got the URL, okay? But, but you said you're gonna show us how to text. Yeah, I can show you how to text as well, yep. All right, so if you, if you go to the URL, what you're gonna do is you're gonna enter as a guest, okay? Because none of you are in my class, right? You can't enter with your single sign-on. You have to enter as a guest, all right? Okay, make sense? All right, typically if I'm working with a class and they, they're using Top Hat for their class, uh, the students will log in with the, with the account and I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the class there, okay? So let me get to my, my real browser here and I will present this year, okay? All right, so just to get some demographics here in the room, want to know, are you a faculty member, staff member, library staff member, graduate student, or other? Uh, if you are um, using a mobile device and want to text, you just basically text your number and the letter. So for, so for example, 4405C, you will text it to this phone number, okay? It's sometimes difficult doing this in a guest environment because you have to have the URL or uh, if, you're, if you're in a classroom setting, they just go to tophat.com and log in, okay? And then, and then they're presented with whatever, whatever the instructor's presenting at that moment, okay? We good? Ish, okay? All right, so to give you an idea of what your neighbors look like here, we have Looks like four library staff members, three staff members, and two faculty members who, who submitted the, the, uh, the, the little survey there, okay? All right, uh, what one word would you use to describe yourself as a teacher slash instructor slash presenter slash someone who gets up in front of other people and talks, right? What one word? So Top Hat, in addition to give you multiple choice questions, can give you kind of like discussion type questions, okay? So here we have engaging, good. Pat yourself on the back. Nervous, edutainment, 
<laughs> Lovely. Mm-hmm. All right. Passionate. Okay. Another feature of Top Hat that I try to use sometimes, but to varying level of success, is if we were all logged in via the, the Top Hat desktop or the mobile app, we could basically thumbs up or vote up the, the answers that we like the best, right? So this might be a way to engage, to get to generate some discussion topics in your classroom or in your meetings, right? Uh, and then kind of, yeah, Chad Wannabe, there you go, okay. So, nice job, okay? So I think that's, let me see if that's all I have for right now. Okay, here we go. Uh, one more, what is your experience with Top Hat? Never use it in class, but I'm feeling adventurous. Tried it once and I crashed and burned. I'm a Top Hat guru. I used it successfully, but I'm still a Top Hat noob. Awesome. Okay. So we've got a few people who have used it, but still a noob. Okay. Uh, and if you are a noob and you've used it successfully, I'd like to get in touch with you because I'm looking for groups of people who use Top Hat. If you ask the Office of Instructional Innovation who is a whiz with Top Hat, they don't really have a good list of people who use it, right? So I would be interested in kind of putting together a group that, that would be interested in exploring how people use it. Okay. <coughs> uh, I've crashed and burned several times, so uh, there's nothing wrong with that either. If you if you are a a closet crash and burner, okay? All right, moving on, let's see, going back to my, um, so what is Top Hat? Top Hat um, is a platform, okay? Uh, they've got different kind of segments within Top Hat. You can use uh, Top Hat to generate assignments. Uh, you can do, uh, Top Hat's kind of pushing this kind of open textbook thing right now, and we're having conversations. Uh, Kelly's a good person to talk to about Top Hat's um, response to that. Uh, it's kind of interesting as, as far as what they think is OER and what we think is OER. So that's a kind of different discussion. For the purposes of, of my presentation today, I've been using uh, the Top Hat Classroom. Okay, so that's my exclusive uh, deal there. Okay, I have not been tying Top Hat to Blackboard. Okay, I've not been grading people, but I've been using it as a way to kind of engage my students in a way that would be otherwise impossible. Okay. Um, many of you have probably used Poll Everywhere. Yes. Oh. Did you just say tie Top Hat to Blackboard? I have not done that. But that's possible. Uh, I'm going to get to that. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, that was just like. Oh. Okay. Let me get to that. Okay. All right. So um, a a competing product to Top Hat is Poll Everywhere. Um, how many of y'all have used Poll Everywhere before? Okay. Poll Everywhere is great, except the limit is that the free version tops out at 45 responses. Uh, I'm teaching classes of 150 plus students sometimes, right? So if you get, if you're only saying, okay, each table only answer one time, right? It just doesn't work, okay? So the reason I use Top Ads because basically universities paid for it and it's what we got, okay? So, uh, but Pull Everywhere is a nice, nice option for that. One nice thing about that is you can download a widget or a, a, a excuse me, a, um, a, a plugin for PowerPoint and it will kind of use it within your PowerPoint slides. Top Hat, the other way it works, you upload your slides to Top Hat and, um, and use your slides within the Top Hat cloud platform, okay? I don't use that because I use a lot of images in my slides and it tends to like <coughs> really mess them up. So I usually just switch back and forth, so. Okay, so to your question, I'm a librarian, not an instructional designer, okay? So there will be questions that come up like that, okay? that I will have to say you want to uh, consult with, your, with the Office of Instructional Innovation or, uh, or, or your course designers and that's those sort of folks, okay? So, uh, so I, I'm, I'm gonna try to show you how I use it and try to be as broad as possible with my explanation, hopefully generate some ideas about how you might apply what I do in your own environment, okay? While also highlighting the library's impact in the classroom and that sort of thing, okay? All right, so, um, this is uh, my typical, uh, this is what I did last Tuesday, three times, okay? So this is about 100 to 150 business cluster students, all sophomores. They are all launching their project two in which they have to do an entrepreneurial business concept. They basically have to create a business and figure out what location they're gonna put it in, okay? So we can't just go in and say, show me what location to put my business in, it is a dry cleaner right, in Google or in any database that we have. We have to teach some more advanced tools that require 
a lot more uh, digesting and interpretation of information. Okay, just to kind of give you an idea as far as what I'm talking about here. Um, If we get rid of the running scenario there, it's going to load all of the entertainment and leisure, and I want to search for bicycling or bicycle. So here we have a percent who do have done mountain biking or road biking within the last 12 months every chance they get. And once again, we close that out and we get our list of variables there in a nice table format. And you can do that for whatever kind of census data you want or, or anything like that. In this case, I'm adding USA to the report because I'm going to compare those cities to the national average, which is kind of nice. And you can also export the data as an Excel file, which is a useful, useful tool. Next, we're going to move on to the ranking scenario here. And right now, it's looking at um, median household income in um, Chattanooga, Tennessee. If we want to add our other views, we have to click Edit View and then go in and choose our other data points there. You can select all if you want to. In this case, we're going to click Done, and it's going to load up all the various data points for our location. Now, right now, we're just looking at the city of Chattanooga, Tennessee. So let's say we want to look at uh, cities by in the state of Tennessee. So we have to add the state of Tennessee and then add the cities. So in this case, we are currently sorted by median household income. We can also go and sort by percentage of people who do golf or do uh, uh, jogging or mountain biking. In this case, we'll sort from largest to smallest by percentage of people in a population who uh, enjoy uh, that activity. So it's a way to identify potential markets for your potential store. Moving on to the map tab here. Currently it's mapping median household income. All right, so you get the idea. So you can imagine that um, if I do that in front of 150 students, this is what's gonna happen, <laughs> all right? I'm going to have, come on, play. Oh, boo, what's going on with you? Oh, it's loading or streaming. Ah. Oh, come on. All right, it was funnier when it was actually playing, okay. So, uh, I don't know why it's not playing right now, but um, I've got a kid over here who's on headphones, largely checked out, okay. I've got a kid here who's gonna be acting goofy, right. And we've got two that are asleep, okay. This is my typical classroom, uh, and sometimes the professors are asleep, okay. I'm not kidding, all right. I presented to uh, the global consulting program on like Monday nights at like 7.30 when there's like 100 kids in the class, you know. And you can look up there and you can see, you know, see this from the people who asked me to come to the class, right? So that's not cool, right? So, uh, so that's my problem, okay? My other problem is that if I just stand up there and just demo this stuff, what happens is like the very next day, all these things marked red are uh, consultation appointments, okay? So the, all these people come in and they ask, hey, that thing that you showed me, can you show me that again, right? Because they're so focused on learning the tool that they don't know how to interpret the data that's in the tool, okay? So I find myself repeating myself over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, okay? Which is not very efficient on my part, not very, not very efficient on their part either, okay? <clears throat> so I, I decided to flip the, flip the model, okay? So what I've started doing, I started doing this about a year and a half ago, is I would give them a, basically a packet of data, okay, that is basically... Um, tied to their project, okay? So here we have, uh, in my particular business concept that I'm modeling here, is I want to <coughs> open either a, a bike, a mountain bike, or excuse me, a mountain bike, a running store, or a golf store, okay? I can combine two of the sports, okay? So either I'm gonna open a bike and golf shop, or a running and golf shop, or a running and bike shop, okay? So I give the students this kind of data, all in, a, all in a PDF, usually through Basecamp or Blackboard or on my website, okay? And then I've built some questions that kind of, we're looking at demographic profiles of people who engage in a particular activity. So here we have running and jogging, bicycle, mountain biking, and golf. Uh, I can imagine if you're do, using this in the classroom, you could have people engage with a particular piece of text, right? Or a particular uh, drawing or piece of artwork or anything like that, any kind of format, right? Something that's tangible or not tangible. It could be on the web or something like that. 
So I ask them things like, you know, looking at, um, uh, look at the three demographic profiles on page one through three, uh, which pair has the most in common? You'll notice up in the top right, there's, I have intentionally left this, there's no correct answer, okay? Because we're interpreting data. I'm just getting to kind of focus on the data there, okay? We can see most people said golfers and mountain bikers, which I tell them I would actually think it would be my, mountain bikers and runners, but that's a different conversation. Um, so this is what this looks like, okay? Uh, so here we have the top hat question that you saw just now on the board. We have you know, all 100 to 150 students huddled over laptops, looking at the data, in many cases having three laptops side by side so that they can try to figure out what's the, what's the, best, uh, what's the best answer there, okay? There's no way I could ever replicate this just standing on that stage saying, here's this data, okay? So top hat allows me to kind of kind of do that, okay? So, um, and then I asked them to reflect. Why did you choose uh, your particular answer? Okay, so here we have the golfers <coughs> and bicyclers have similar incomes. Mountain biking and running have the most variety of people of all ages, gender, etc. So they're getting it. This person here, that's not in the data, right? They're just kind of making that up, okay? So, so two out of three is not bad. So here we have a nice little discussion question uh, kind of like your 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 describe yourself in one word of, of teaching. Okay. Oop, went too far. So I also have them look at tables like this. This is another. Uh, it's a cross tab from Simmons, and I don't just give them this. I give them directions on how to read this. Okay. So it's important not to just say, "Hey, here's this thing. Go answer this question about it." I do give them this little little handout that actually comes from Simmons that talks about how to read this thing, but it's not exactly perfectly clear, okay? Um, so I do give them that, have them read it for a couple minutes, and then look at this and say something like, you know, based upon the charts on pages five and six, what percentage of golfers who play every chance they get bought golf clubs in the last 12 months, okay? You can see here 49% answer correctly, okay? This is just from one class of, of 104 students, and this is about typical. Um, I think my lowest has been about 37, my highest has been about 63, okay? So they always are going to kind of score pretty low in this first question, all right? After this question, that's when I will just basically explain, like, well, here's how you can read this thing, okay? This is what you probably did to get the answer wrong. Here's how you can probably read it, okay? And I always stand like that when I'm, when I'm explaining <laughs> things, of course. Um, and then we see that we go from 49% to 96% on a similar question just like two, two minutes later, okay? They're automatically like doubly as smart, okay? Which is really kind of cool, all right? And you can kind of see them all like, oh man, that's awesome, you know? And I congratulate them on the fact that they actually learned something, right? You know, in my previous like stand up on the stage and just lecture and that kind of stuff, I had no idea if they were grasping like what we're talking about, right? So. In this case, we can see that they actually uh, did, in fact, learn something. So what I typically do after that, so they still get an idea of how to uh, find, the, find the actual data, I will play a video just like the one I showed you at the beginning of the session today <coughs> that kind of walks them through how to find the data that they just interpreted. Okay? So my understanding, my idea is like once they see the data, see how they might apply it to their potential project, see how they understand it, then we can spend about six minutes watching a video, okay? And the reason I do a video in class and not uh, a live demo is because I'm doing this three or four times over. I wanna be consistent. Also, the internet can flake out or the database can be slow or I can just be playing off my game, you know, and forget to tell the second and third class something or I get like better through the day so the first class gets like the worst of me or the last class gets the worst of me, right? So. So it, it's a way to kind of be consistent through that way, okay? They can also refer back to this video after class as well uh, for, um, for additional instruction. Because they'll come back and say, hey, that thing you showed us in class, can you show me that again? I'll usually say, go to the video, right? <clears throat> All right, so this is what this looks like in action. You can see there's me on my video there, and this is the, the typical classroom of, you know, 100, 100 plus students or so. And this is in Nelson Commons, by the way. All right, so some, um, sometimes you can use Top Hat in a way that might engage some discussion when you couldn't otherwise have a discussion, okay? So for this example, I asked them, um, 
I asked him a question. Look in this map here. This map looks at uh, percentage by state of people who play golf every chance they get. Okay? So I asked them, uh, this is all based on Simmons data. I asked them in which state would a, based solely on the data, in which state would a golf shop be most successful? Okay? And if you go back and look at the data, there's North Dakota at the very top. They're all choosing correctly, right? Which is what I want them to do, because I want them to choose correctly and choose because it's wrong, right? <coughs> right? So I asked them, like, what do you know about North Dakota? Well, it's lowly populated and it's cold, right? And how many golf tournaments have you ever seen in North Dakota on TV, right? So this is an example and say, look, we could we would get different uh, different a different map and we did number of people or filtered that based on population. So it's really a good exercise in seeing them say, oh man, hey, particularly after they only got 43% on the other question and they almost all get this right. And you're like, you got it right, but then you're wrong. You know, they're kind of like, whoa, what's up? You know, um, it's a good way to kind of say, look, you just need to think critically about what you're looking at, okay? All right, you can also do this in a, in a smaller classroom setting. Um, this is um, uh, the Learning Lab in 251, and uh, these are MBA students. There's about 47 MBA students in this lab during this picture here, and they're all working on individual pods of tables on top hat content just for that group, okay? Um, what this allows me to do in a smaller room like this, because you can circulate, sometimes you can make the question a little bit more challenging, right? To make them, because if, you're not going to be able to circulate in a room of 150 people very easily, um, especially if it's like Morton Hall or something like one of those kind of like math rooms of death that you're kind of, everybody's looking down on you, right? So, uh, so in a smaller classroom with 50 people, you can kind of circulate and, and things like that. The difficulty in that is trying to devise questions, at least for me, that lead them to a successful answer, right? So we don't want to just like quiz them and give them questions that uh, they're going to fail at, right? So, so part of the challenge is trying to draft questions uh, in which you, you're, you're leading them enough, but you're not giving them the answer. So here we're looking at um, the MBAs. We're, we're doing a product, project for Frisch's Big Boy Restaurant, Shoney's Big Boy. Uh, down south uh, a couple years ago and uh, basically we're looking at them to, to benchmark financial averages for frishes compared to industry averages in the area right so we're basically making a comparison but in order to do that they had to actually find what they were looking for right so you can imagine how difficult that would be but if I just stood up there and showed them how to do it they're gonna they're gonna check out right so because the table is, is going in there I also have them like uh, name their team sometimes so there's flying camels and team bull and they get creative and that sort of thing all right, so all of this, um, all this can take time, okay? Uh, the first time uh, I did this, um, I'll give you an example. Last year I did a, I, I kind of flipped a, a global consulting program class. Uh, we had a new coordinator uh, for the program and he asked me to do it. I was like, well, I, I, I'd want to do it, but I want to do something different because I'm tired of people falling asleep on me and I'm just kind of wasting my time at 7.30 I'm on a Monday night when I could be going to the basketball game, right? Um, so, uh, and he was amenable to that, and so I did, did it all via Top Hat. And he asked me after the class, that was great, how long did it take you? I said, I've got about four hours in this one hour class, right? Uh, which is a lot, okay? However, um, I'm actually gonna go teach that same class here at three o'clock, having not taught it since like last February. I'm just basically using the same content. So I have about, maybe 25 minutes, just kind of updating my questions, changing some of the things around, you know, for another 150, 200 students, okay? So, so the initial investment was pretty high, right? But I'm able to kind of recycle some of that content, update it as, as need be, okay? Same thing for the cluster stuff. I had probably about eight hours in a one hour credit, you know, one, one hour uh, presentation but I was doing it three times, right, for you know, 425, 450 students. So I was looking at a cost per student, not necessarily for my whole time there, so. Um, it's also, this is me trying to learn to play acoustic uh, fingerstyle blues here. Um, there, and I highlighted uh, regular practice, right? Because, you know, something like this, 
you're going to probably fail the first time you do it. You're going to, your questions are not going to be great. You're going to, your questions are going to be in a way that's, that you thought were pretty intuitive, but you, um, you know, your students or, 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 or staff members or, who, or whoever have a hard time following or that sort of thing. Uh, I've recently gotten, uh, recently I got Paul to look at some questions for me that were useful, you know, so getting some, getting some colleagues who aren't close to the, to the subject matter. Um, there's also some, some course delivery that kind of takes some challenge there, you know. Um, before I started doing the video stuff for those classes, I was trying to do the demo thing, and it was taking me too long, and so then it put me behind on the questions, and now I was rushing through the assignments and all that kind of stuff. So, so after about 18 months of, you know, or three or four semesters of doing this a few times, I feel like I've gotten to the point where I'm pretty good at what, what I do in a class, right? I couldn't necessarily tell you how you could do it, but I could uh, maybe give you some ideas, maybe. Um, and I'm still learning something. Uh, I've done this for about 18 months uh, uh, for three or four semesters, and last Tuesday was the first time I actually asked, uh, did any sort of assessment at the end, right? What you think, like, duh, that's probably pretty obvious. But I was, I was so into assessing the actual learning of the content in the time rather than having some reflection at the end, right? Um, so, so here we have only two people out of 109 were confused. That's pretty good, right? Um, but we have uh, 26 who know, understand, but they, they don't know how they'll apply, and 81 who were like, yes, I'm sold, right? So that's pretty cool. All right. Um, so this is kind of funny. I actually went into Flickr looking for Creative Commons photos for lecture hall. And this was on the first page, which I thought was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty nice. So the original talk or, or um, title of this, of this talk is Wake Up and Get to Work, How to Engage Your Students, essentially, right? Um, and part of it, part of my, 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 my drive in doing this is, as a matter of fact, to get our students to wake up. But to a certain degree, um, it's... It's me who's been uh, awakened, awoken, I guess, in my teaching styles, right? Uh, I've been teaching library-related stuff for 15 plus years now, and um, it wasn't until I walked into like Morton Hall, this isn't Morton, but it's close enough, right? You can imagine me being this guy down here trying to demo uh, business databases or whatever, or you can, whatever kind of Western Civ or whatever you're doing down here, to all these folks and trying to be engaging. And it used to be when I still had hair and a lot less gray hair, uh, I thought I was young and hip enough to be engaging with, with the students. I'm, I, I don't kid myself like that anymore, right? So, so I have to find new ways to kind of you know, level up my teaching. And, and Top Hat has been one of those ways that's, that has given me ways to be more intentional about my teaching, right? I no longer try to cram like, you know, eight different databases into a one hour classroom session, right? I now just focus on three, right? And those are the three key ones. I figure any, anything else they can go do, you know, I've got plenty of help guides they can refer to and that sort of thing, right? But I want to look, be intentional about the things that I'm teaching and intentional about the things that I'm, that I'm in teaching in a way that I can assess it, right? So I'm assessing that through, through Top Hat, right? Um, so, has it helped me any? Uh, so these are, this was uh, last Tuesday. Uh, all, everything in red are all cluster consultations right after the class. So I'm still busy with, uh, uh, with demand from students. And that wasn't my goal, really. My, what, my goal wasn't to make my calendar easier. Um, what I have found is that rather than them saying, hey, show us how to use this thing, they have more questions about which data they might want to be using, okay? So it's, it's more information. They're, they're higher level questions, okay? It's kind of hard to explain, okay? It's not like, hey, that thing you showed us in class, can you show it to me again, right? I'm, I'm getting a, a higher level of question, a higher level of discussion uh, amongst, the, amongst the students uh, when they come in and ask things, okay? Um, you can also use uh, Top Hat in a different way. Uh, two years ago, we did a pretty radical uh, service model change uh, in the library. Uh, you may or may not have noticed. Uh, if you haven't noticed, it's great. Um, 
but we've got new people working the service desk, people who haven't worked the service desk in a, in a ever, you know, at those particular service desks. And uh, we did some chat training uh, two years ago, and, and um, what, what I decided to do, because I was leading the training, I knew that some of the people who might uh, not, people, who in a, people in attendance might not be as vocal as they probably are thinking, right? So because we're new to the service model, they're afraid if they speak up about something, they might, uh, you know, they'd lose their voice, right? Or, or other people who are in the room who might be uh, overshadow others with their voice, right? So, so I used Top Hat to basically, what we did is basically said, hey, here's this chat transaction. How would you do this chat better, right? And so we had people who did some reflective exercises and go through and give, you know, that chat operator's initial response wasn't very welcoming. You know, a better greeting to the patient would be nice. Better language than just hold on for a second, right? So those are things that some of your more soft-spoken people or people who are less confident might not have said, you know, in a, in a traditional kind of discussion forum. Okay. All right, so let me show you uh, the ins and outs of Top Hat real quick. <coughs> and kind of show you, let me get out of some of this stuff here. All right, so this is what I've been showing you guys here. Um, and let me close out of this real quick. So you can see um, I've got some classes or some uh, courses available uh, in Top Hat in which I am a professor partner, if you will. Okay, so here's one, uh, the AM cohort, spring 2018. This is owned by Professor Catherine Penrod. She's the, she's the, uh, uh, the cluster coordinator in the College of Business. Uh, I asked her to add me to, to the, the cohorts, and so that means that when the students go to tophat.com, they just log in with their Ohio ID and password. None of the what was that URL kind of business, you know, <laughs> they just go in via the app and they're, they're good to go, okay? Uh, she can also take attendance, right? Uh, and in one, uh, one case last week, uh, she wasn't there, so I took attendance on her behalf inside of Top Hat, right? None of this, like, passing the, the sheet around and having people, you know, forge their person. Yeah? Can I ask a question? Sure. Okay, so um, with Top Hat, with or the attendance, the students know that I'm going to give do attendance at the beginning of the class. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, you know, open it up and whatever. And I've discovered that there are people who are know that I do that, and so they log in Top Hat somewhere off campus or wherever they are. And uh, according to my list, they're, they they have attended. And if, you know, you can't do that with twelve. But you can do that with forty students in the class. I'm not going to notice one. Person sure. Right can I can I go for that? Yeah, sure. I, I just learned that Top Hat's instituting some GPS load. No location systeming. So if you contact Top Hat's customer support, they might be able to tell you how to make that so that you know if the student's not inside your the, the location, they won't be able to log in. Well, I called them last week and they said, "Huh." <laughs> <laughs> I just heard that last week. Okay. Oh, man. Well, that person hadn't heard your person. Yet. Sometimes you get varying levels of support. Yeah. Um, so case in point. Uh, so this is a this is a uh, a class in which students are enrolled, right? So their Ohio IDs are added to this Top Hat course. Um, everything I do that's not for enrolled students, like what I gave you guys today, is under this folder called Chad's Business Research, in which I had to contact Top Hat to set it up so it would allow for guest access, right? Mm -hmm. I did that once, got the person who knew how to do it. They did it, right? And then I want to do another folder. I contact them about a month later. They're like, no, that's not possible, right? So I had to go back and dictate my email and uh, say, the idea is here's, here's how, how the other person did it, right? So it's, I mean, it's, unfortunately, it's, it's internet customer service sometimes. So uh, sometimes we have to. <coughs> by the way. I mean, they're really super helpful. Mm -hmm. I have a few questions when I first started getting, getting going, but that one sort of irritated me. Yeah. One professor I was working with, she only leaves the attendance open for five minutes, but it's not the same five minutes. Yeah. Well, I noticed that when I did it at the end of class, I counted there were 31 students that day, and 
32 logged in, but I'm not sure. <laughs> So. Yeah, you could always have your buddy text you when yeah. the yeah. five minute window is. I mean, there's always ways. That would take a level of organization. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You're teaching ethics, right? Or, uh, <laughs> Actually, I do teach ethics. So. Uh, not the only, that's not the main topic, but it's in there. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and Scott's with the College of Business here, so, and they they can get pretty um, inventive in their, in their, uh, their end runs. So yeah, I, I think we do have it. I haven't used it, but I think our uh, our in-house kind of software has a attendance function, and you can only uh, it only counts you if you're in the building. Okay. So something like that. You know? Yeah. So hmm. <laughs> interesting. So I don't I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know the the, the full answer to that. So. Um, so let me let me go in and kind of show you you know just real quick for those who have not used Top Hat how to create a create a question. So I'm going to go inside my my uh, um, my my open course, if you will. And um, so here's this, the content I've been working on on my Top Hat presentation. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a question, and we'll just call it multiple choice here. And we'll just call this um, we'll just call this feedback, right? And um, we can say today's session was, and we can call this inspiring, meh, or we'll add another. Um, I want my hour back. And uh, I usually don't do correct answers, but this time we will, right? <laughs> okay. And you can also do, you know, another, we can create another question, um, and we can call this one a discussion question. And this may be, uh, you know, we can say, um, um, I'd like to know more about, and you can say, And so that's a typical kind of um, uh, discussion question that you might you might do that way. Okay. All right. What I found too, uh, which is really nice, is uh, so let's say I'm I'm teaching this GCP class. This is what I'm doing at three o'clock today. Let's say I'm teaching again uh, next week. Um, I can actually copy this, you know, to another folder, or I can copy it to another course. Right. So this is kind of nice. If you're teaching. You know, it's, if it's the same content, but it's a different number of enrollees, right? You can basically transfer the content over. Um, even if students have already answered the questions, it's not going to keep the questions, right? It's just going to roll your, I mean, it's not going to keep their answer, excuse me. It's just going to roll their content over. So it's a good way to kind of, you know, recycle your content. And so the content you've been, you spent four hours doing for a one, one hour class now only takes you 10 minutes to go through and, and uh, change a few uh, you know, change the name of a of a piece of text or, or something like that. So it's a good way to kind of you know make your make your work scalable. So all right. So um, if you're curious about answering those, um, you can of course go back and answer if today's session was in fact meh or you want your hour back that's fine um anyway so that's all the content i have uh, i just want to leave a little bit of time for questions or there appear to be some other top hat gurus or top hat aficionados in the room as well so yes so i do my quizzes and attendance but i haven't done and i'm, I'm sure it's really easy what you've been doing with you know getting and what i want to do is having questions Anonymous, but to spark conversation or opinions, mm -hmm. you know, like you're doing there. Do you like, did you like class or not? Sure. And um, uh, so there's just a place where it says anonymous or something like that in there, so that it doesn't record who said it. Yes, you can actually. Um, I know it's there somewhere. And then, the, but my main question is, how do you upload your PowerPoint? 
so there's some information on their site to do it. When I've done it, uh, and, you know, as you can see, most of my presentations images, yeah. it gets nasty, right? Exactly. So uh, I think more traditional text, you know, if you're just using words and bullet points and that kind of stuff, that's a little bit easier to translate. When I try to do, you know, slides of, of with images, it, it has, has smushed it, right? So, yeah, and that's been, that's been, I haven't tried that within the past, I don't know, six or nine months or so, so that may have improved. But, so uh, does it spark conversation pretty well if you ask, I'm sorry, I'll give a lot of um, But does it spark conversation pretty well if you have, um, you know, what did you think of, da da da, or, you know, like I have, I, I do social welfare uh, policy, and there's a lot of sort of, you know, touchy kind of questions about, oh, I don't know, like abortion. Sure. So, something that people wouldn't necessarily want to talk about out loud necessarily, but I can get get some idea of, I wouldn't necessarily talk about abortion specifically, but you know, controversial topics. Mm -hmm. So if I could say, well, how many of you feel that this policy would be a better strategy than the one we've been talking about? Or sure. Like I've used it more of a, uh, of a way to kind of test the climate, I guess, in the room, you know, of understanding and that sort of thing. Um, I've also used if I find an answer in there that, that that is good or it's stellar, you know, I might say, does anyone share care to share how they did this or you know what they were thinking when they when they grabbed this answer or that sort of thing? That doesn't get to your your touchy subject uh, question there, but um, I uh, you know for me it's more of a level of understanding sometimes, you know, than. And I'm not doing controversial topics by any means. So, bicycle stores in Memphis is not, uh, yeah. you know. So, <coughs> but it's but it is nice to see. Uh, in my last example with the with the chat training, right? We have some really uh, soft-spoken folks. We also have some you know different classifications in the building. You know, as far as you know status and that sort of thing. So. Um, uh, the training we did was had librarians. It also had classified staff, and so having that the 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 uh, discussion or the answers be anonymous was good. And I was able to say, "Oh, this is a great answer. Let's build off of this, right?" Uh, as a, as a trainer, right? So I would take that idea and then run, run with it for my you know to in my own discussion. So once again, in terms of how the students access this, so if you wanted to start, say, taking attendance first week of classes, and you get some students that are just registering maybe the day before they came into class. Mm -hmm. how, how does that work? Did, is, are they automatically loaded into the system when you s set up Top Hat? I don't know. I don't okay. think so. Yeah. Because if you ask, like, um, so I'm teaching with Colin Gabler this afternoon and uh, for GCP, and he's not using Top Hat, so he doesn't have... I don't know if he's contacts the registrar or I'm not sure. Do you do you happen to know how? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, if somebody is has trouble getting in for some reason, you know, something some glitch happens, they, I tell them to come up to me after class and I will put that they attended. Mm -hmm. And so that's gets around that issue. But right. if they're not, I don't do the attendance the first week or so because <coughs> they're not all there. Right. Right. When you sign on and select your institution, then it takes you to the university single sign-on. So I think, I would guess it would be somewhere in OIT if the student wasn't associated. Because I think just any student with a, at Ohio.edu, because the single sign-on is involved, it should have them in that way. But they have to be enrolled in that class, yeah. though. You have to... You can't just... Mm. You, you have, have to... to yeah. Yeah, probably a question for our instructional designer folks, unfortunately. So, yeah. I just wanted to add something. Sure. The, um, the thing you're talking about is called Secure Attendance, and it's in beta. And like, I just went into a course that I have, and it's a an option to enable it. And it looks like just looking at their, they have a link. When you go to that option, it has a, like a link to their help thing, and it looks like it gives you a list of people who failed the security checks that you can, that marks them as absent and then you can see, like, you know, they said they were there, but they didn't, weren't in the geolocation as defined. So 
It's in the course options. Course it's called secure attendance. Is that what I just said? Yeah, secure attendance options. You can turn it on for your course. Thank Seems you. like the default would be it's just on. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. I guess unless unless there's a ten, maybe you're doing an online course. Yeah, um, synchronously, mm -hmm. and you want to know if everybody's there. And they could be at different locations. So I guess that would make sense. Going back to your discussion <coughs> question. <coughs> In the discussion question, when you create a discussion, if you scroll down a little bit, there is uh, participants are anonymous to <coughs> say everyone. It won't uh, it won't show names. So this is under if you create a discussion question. Yeah. Under if you scroll down a little bit under response options, um, participants are anonymous to and you just select that and just say everyone. Yeah. Right. So or if you did if you did participants only, uh, I'm assuming that means it would. The response would show up in your grade book or you know behind the scenes but not on the screen right, right? right. so yeah okay thank you thanks, thanks for great. coming thank you john sure our next uh presentation in the impact through action series is dr sarah harrington on april 11th talking about what libraries can learn about customer service from disney Ooh. <laughs> <coughs>